Okay guys, this is your first texturing tutorial uh, where we're working with the texture maps and laying out UVs and doing some simple things like that. Um, this is the scene that we're going to be working with. This is actually on Google Classroom for you guys to use so you don't have to build anything. You can use this scene exactly what I have right here. And then I also, if I show you here, here's the scene folder. I have given you some texture maps to work with as well. So we're going to be using these textures and placing them on our scene to start putting textures on this scene. So I'm going to just go ahead and get you guys started. You load up the scene and get to right here where you can see everything. And we're going to go ahead and start with this tabletop. So the idea is for this tabletop, I am going to use like a, a mosaic tile kind of a pattern that I found. And what I'll show you how to do is put the color in and the bump map. So you can have a little mosaic tile tabletop right here. So the first thing I need is a shader. I'll come over here and get into my hypershade. This table is already done, so you don't have to worry about that. That shader is already here in the scene. That's what's showing up right here. Oh, whoops. Where did I? Silly me. I just closed it. There we go. So now what we need is something for the tabletop. For our for our mosaic tile design and I am going to use a fong because I want them to be a little bit shiny um, not reflective but a little bit shiny so I've got my fong and the images that we're going to use I'll show you in here we're going to use this for the color so this is going to be our color pattern for our text for our our tabletop and then I'm going to use this for the bump map and then what will happen is all of these sort of brighter, lighter shapes will rise up a little bit and then the little lines in between where it's darker will sink in and it hopefully will look a little bit like grout in the tiles. So that's the idea. That's what we're trying to create here. So I'm going to come back up here to Maya. I've got my shader already created, have I? Yes, I have my fong. Let me go ahead and rename that Tabletop. shader and I sometimes will like to do this sort of like camel case thing where you do something in lowercase and then the second word is uppercase. Um, I think that's an easy way to sort of label things especially here in the hypershade and in the, the outliner and things like that. So that's how I do that sometimes. And then I'm going to come over here in the color and I'm going to click my little checkerboard, click file and then I'll click my little folder and then I am going to find my project and actually you know what I should do instead of searching for my project I should just set it like you should anyway I'm going to come up here to file set project I'm working with the basic texturing tutorials folder and set that and now when I come back in here it's pointing me right to my folder with the tabletop just like that so that's how easy that is. If you lose the file path to your source images folder when you're trying to texture, just set your project and it'll point Maya right back to that. So I've got my color right in there. And then I'm gonna come down. Let me go ahead and select my actual shader first here. And I'm gonna come down where it says bump slash normal mapping. Click that little checkerboard. I'll choose file again. And then I'm gonna have to find my file Actually, you know what, I'm just going to right here in the bump value, plug that in there, and then I will choose my tabletop bump, and click OK, and now you can already see, look at that, you can start to see that. I'm actually going to change this over to a plane, so you can see a little bit more what it's going to be like. So this is what my texture is going to be like on my table. Now the only other thing that I might do because inside my black sort of grout lines, it's a little bit shiny. And most of the time grout, unless it's been polished, will not be shiny like that. So what I can actually do is come down here on my shader and in my specular color, that's what's gonna control how shiny things are. I can actually put that bump map image in there as well. And then it will do the same kind of thing. If we look at this image again, all of these lighter spots will be more shiny 
and then the black spots will be not shiny. It works very similar to the bump map. It just controls the shininess rather than the bump. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now you can see my grout lines aren't shiny anymore, only my tiles. So this is how easy it is to just take custom textures, sort of change them up a little bit in Photoshop so they can function as multiple maps inside of your shader network. So now what we have to do is assign this new shader that we've created to our tabletop. And I really only need it on the top face here. So I'm just going to right click and hold and go to face and just select the face and assign it right there. And you can kind of see now that it's on there. It's a little bit sort of facing the wrong direction. So I don't really like how it's laid out. It's sort of scrunched too much this way. We actually need to just rotate it so that it goes the other way. So that's real easy to do with just the planar mapping. So if I come up here to UV's planar mapping options, make sure that it's set to the Y axis. I'll keep the keep image and height ratio on so we maintain that sort of flag shape. Uh, and project. And now what we can do, I still don't really like how it is, so I'm going to actually rotate this like that. Try to do it 90 degrees as close as I can. And then I'm going to scrunch it in here. All I did was click this little T. That's how you toggle between those two. Just select that little T at the corner. Scrunch this into here. This is probably okay. And then there is my sort of British flag made out of mosaic tiles for my tabletop. Now if you're looking at this and you can't see the bump map or the, the specular like I can here, come up here where it says, I want to say it's a renderer, yeah, and just make sure it's set to viewport 2.0. Um, and then you should be able to see it that way. And then that's it. That's it for the tabletop. That tabletop is done now. So then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to work on this ball. Let me get back to object mode. We're going to work on this ball. This is actually going to be a tennis ball. I'll go ahead and show you my images that we'll use. There's this one, which is our color. And then you can see the little stripe going through. And then this one is going to be our bump map. So you've got that sort of smooth black line for your stripe and then like a little bit of a, a textured kind of bump map for the outside, for the like the felt part. So that's what we're going to use for that. And then for this one, it's not really shiny, like tennis balls aren't really shiny at all. So I'm just going to use a Lambert for this one. I'm just going to choose a Lambert and I'm going to call it tennis ball shader. And then this is starting to get a mess, so I'm going to clean it up just by doing that. And then for my color, again, click the checkerboard, you click the little file, click the file folder, and then I'll choose my tennis ball color. And then make sure that my shader is selected again. Come down to the bump map. Click File. I'll click this little thing for the bump value and choose my image map here. And tennis ball bump map. And now there we have it. And if I put this on the sphere, that's what it's going to look like when we assign it. Hopefully. We might have to do some mapping, but yeah, you can see the tennis ball. That's basically what we've got going on here now. So now I'm going to go ahead and assign this to our ball. And what you can see, actually, when we get up close, is that it's not laying on there quite the same. And the reason why is because instead of just using a regular polysphere, I actually created a sphere by smoothing a cube. So, but that gives you the opportunity to practice with this spherical projection. UV projection. So I'm going to come up here to UV, spherical, and now what I can do is I've got my, you can see where my little square is with my manipulators. I'm going to take this red cube and pull this all the way around to the back so that it lines up. 
and then this green one, I'll pull that one all the way to the top. And now we have our tennis ball. Now it might be that our bump map is a little bit too deep because you see how it's getting like really black shadows happening. So what we can do, and you might want to do that for the tabletop as well, um, but you can come in, select your shader, find your bump node right here in the, in the shader network so you can get your bump tab. And here where it says bump depth, you can start to turn that down and that will start to smooth it out a little. If you go farther, you can actually even invert it. And that's, that's not really gonna work for a tennis ball, but that's something that you can do. Um, so maybe just have a, a more subtle bump map like that for a better tennis ball look. And that's gonna look a lot better for us. So those are just like a couple simple little ways that you can do some texturing on things. This soda can that we're gonna do next is gonna be a little bit more complicated because what we're gonna try to do is create this so that it is a metal can with like a, a plastic label. And then also we're gonna have a bump map on the top instead of an actual model of the little tab. And we're gonna use a transparency map to, to make it look like that the can is open. So there's gonna be a lot going on with this can, um, but it's all just basic tools that we've already talked about pretty much. And so I'm gonna show you how to put this together. So we're going to start out with the blend, and that's going to be our color. And actually, before we even do that, let me, because what we have to do is we have to map this out correctly. And what we want is we want to do a planar map for the top so that we can get our, our texture down there at the top so that we can see our, our tab and our little hole and everything. Um, but then around here, we just need to do a cylindrical map. So there's a couple things we got to do um, just to get this set up. So what I'll do instead is I was going to go ahead and just start making the color and everything, but I'm just going to very temporarily right now with my blend, put an image in that I'm just going to use for reference. And this is only to make sure that we have our UVs laid out correctly. So I'm going to choose file and with my file, I'm going to come in and I'm going to choose can top reference. So this is, this is actually the reference I used to paint the other textures. Um, and it's just, you can see the can from the top. And that's what I'm going to temporarily add as the color to my can. So I'm going to go ahead and say open there. And then let me go ahead and rename this soda can. And then I will assign that image to our soda can. And now you can kind of see what that looks like. It's sort of just wrapping around all crazy. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna do a planar map right from the top here. So planar map through the Y axis. And now I'll go in and see if I need to make any kind of adjustments. I don't think I have to. I think maybe, let me just make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go ahead and select this and then just widen it out just a little so that it kind of lines up, you know, like this edge of the sort of flat part of the can lines up with the actual geometry that does that. All right, so now the top of it is mapped because we use that temporarily as a reference. So now what I can do is come in here and remove that color and just take out the color just like that. So it leaves it back to this nice shiny metal. And you can't really see anything yet because we haven't really done anything that's going to help with that. But I can come in here to my bump map. And then if I go into file, go into my bump map, and then click my file folder. And then I'm going to use the can top bump right here. This is the bump map that I painted off that reference. And now when I put that in, you can see what that looks like. You can see that it's going to look like the pop tab at the top. 
looks like that. So, and again, you might want to turn this down. So if you come in here to your actual, let me straighten out my stuff here again. I'll select my soda can, map my nodes, and then come in here to the bump depth and maybe turn this down a tiny, tiny bit. Not too much, just a little bit, just to kind of smooth it out a little. Something like that. That's going to look a lot better over here. And now we need to cut this hole out right here. And the way that we do that is in the hyper shade. I'm going to select my shader node. And I'm going to come down here to where it says transparency. And I'm going to put an image in where anything that is black is going to be transparent and the white parts are going to not be transparent. So I'm going to just choose file. Um, can top transparency. That's my transparency map. Now you can see it's opened that up. And if we look out here, you can see inside the can now because we put that transparency map in. You can see it at the bottom. So what you'd want to be careful of is you could either, you know, apply a different shader to those faces or just make sure that you don't ever photograph this in a way that you can see the bottom. You could hide that. Um, but yeah, now we have an open soda can right here. Now the last thing that we need is the label around it. So, and probably we need it to be a different shader than what the actual blend is. Because once we get into the next tutorial, um, which is going to have to do with lighting and rendering and creating reflections and all of that, the, the, the metal part on the top of a soda can is usually shinier and more reflective than the actual label. So you'll have to use probably a different shader for that. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm actually going to use a font for that. So that's my soda can. Let me actually just change one thing. I've called this the soda can label, and that's not what I want. I just want this to be the soda can itself. And then I'm going to make a different shader for the soda can label, and that's going to be a font. So. That's going to be my soda label. And then for the color, I have a Coke label that I have created. Soda label right there. And this is just going to wrap around the can. So now what I want to do is I want to just assign it to part of the faces. I don't want to put it on the whole thing because we've already taken a lot of effort to make sure that we've got this nice bump map and everything. So what I'm going to do is come to the side view or the front view, it doesn't really matter actually. And I got to find my soda can. This is kind of a big scene, so give me just a second. All right, I'm going to select it here in object mode. And then over here, I'll hit F and zoom in on it. So then what I want to do is I'm going to select faces and I'm just going to start right up here. See where that line is going right in the middle right there? That's where I want to start selecting. And then all the way down to there. Now we're getting a little bit of the inside faces. So that might not matter because again, this is a part of the can that we're probably not going to see. Um, and that's something to just always think about. If there's something that you're doing that you know no one's ever going to see it, no one's going to come and look inside the inside of this can, probably doesn't matter what happens to it. But if it's going to be shot in some way and it's going to be um, up close in the camera, then you do want to go ahead and address it. Um, but we're not going to have to worry about that. So I'm just going to assign my soda can right there. And what you can see is that it's all stretched, all crazy. And the reason why is because we did that planar map from the top to get the top working okay. So what we can do now is just do a cylindrical map just on these faces with these with the label on it and, and just wrap that around so that it looks like it's supposed to look. So I'm going to come up to UV, go to cylindrical mapping, and then I'll pull this around so that it wraps all the way around just like that. 
it looks like it's lining up correctly at the top so we don't want to do anything with that and that's our soda can so that one it took a couple different shaders and again you can see on the inside so decide you know what you want to do about that maybe you want to actually put like a black surface under there that hides the inside of the can it's completely up to you um, but yeah this is our basic stuff that we created for our little picnic scene we have a table and a little ball and a little soda can um, and it's just basic putting together custom textures that I've already painted for you and just knowing how to map them onto your objects. So now the last thing that we're going to do is this sort of grassy hill area. It's going to be a grassy hill and we're going to put some grass on there. So let me go ahead really quick and just, just put some grass on there just to see where we are. So and I feel like probably a Lambert is going to be the best for this grass. Like I know if you get up real close to grass sometimes it can be shiny but if you're just looking out across like a grassy area a lot of times there's not going to be a lot of shininess. So we'll go ahead and just use this and I'm going to call it grass. And then there we go. In my color actually have an image of grass that we're going to use in that same folder. It's just a grass. Room. It just looks like this. I'll open that and then we'll assign it to our plane and just sort of see where we are. All right, so what's happening is it's kind of just putting our grass in all of the squares that are there in the geometry, kind of, right like that. So what you want to look for though is that see how you can see these seams? This is really not what you want. And what might actually happen when you put this on is that you might just have like one big piece of grass um, that looks really big. I um, mean you want to avoid that too. So you can actually take your planar map and maybe you, just, you don't want the scale. Maybe you want a different scale of this. You can change that if you come up to UVs, go to your planar map. See that's what it looked like if it was just one iteration of that of that grass texture and that looks really wrong because you know how big grade blades of grass are compared to like a table um, you want to pay attention to scale when you're working with textures so let me just go ahead and scale that down I've seen that a lot where people forget about paying attention to scale and they'll be like creating carpet or wall textures or something and there'll be like a huge texture like this um, and then it makes everything in the scene look really, really small, like it's a miniature or a toy or something. So you just watch out for scale on your shaders. I'm going to scale this way down. Probably going to get a lot closer to my table so I can see the scale of it better. Um, and it was actually probably pretty good how it was, so I'm going to try to get close to that. That's probably good. But now the other issue that we're having is all those seams. Um, and that's something, if we look at this from far away, it looks really weird and wrong and computery and fake. So, but there is a way to change that and fix it in Photoshop. So, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Photoshop here and open up my grass texture that I'm using and I'll show you how to make it a seamless texture. So, basic texturing tutorials, it's in source images, grass. So this is my grass texture and what we have is that it's a little bit lighter on this side and a little darker here and that's creating that kind of a seam that's happening. So what you can do is if you come up to filter down to other and go to offset, what this does is that you can slide this either vertically or horizontally and it'll actually slide the image over. Um, and so this part will start to disappear off of this and this line will come in a little bit and then whatever disappears will start to fill in on the other side. So it's kind of showing it like it's wrapping around. So if I start to move this horizontally, you can see where that seam is right there. And then I can do it vertically as well. So you can start to see that seam right there right there. I'll move it up a little bit more just so it's more in the center. That vertical one is a little bit harder because it's a little bit more subtle. It's 
probably good. And then what you can do is you know where your seams are now because you can see them. You can come in with your clone stamp tool and just start painting that out. Come over here and I'll do a little bit of a swatch from right here and just start painting that seam out. Maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger. And then always be sort of resampling often when you're doing that kind of thing. Um, and then because it's grass and it's sort of non-specific in sort of the shapes of it, you can get away with doing a lot of just playing around with the shapes and stuff. And then let's see over here, we'll start resampling here and start painting in some of that. Be careful as you start to get close to a line because like if you were painting on a line and then this little cross where you where you did your sample it will paint the line in for you too so I'm gonna go ahead and resample here and then even because you kind of have a dark stripe here that will still kind of make like a, a tiled kind of look. So you can even maybe sort of start to paint some of that out even more. And just sort of paint this a little bit with your clone stamp tool, just until you get something that you like. And now I'm gonna save this. Now you should probably go ahead and save a new image because you really probably be, shouldn't be saving over files because you might need to go back to them at some point. So I'm just gonna say grass two on this and then I'm going to come back to Maya and come into my grass and I'm going to reload that other image grass 2 and now you can see you can still see the tiling but it's not nearly as severe that seam is not nearly as severe and this is a little bit more like what you're likely to see like in a video game or something like that there definitely is still work to be done um, but that is how you do that. If you find that you have a texture and it's not seamless and you want to make it seamless so it repeats over a wider space, like this image here, or this plane, um, that's how you do that in Photoshop. You use the offset filter and then you just use the clone tool to, to paint away this, the edges. So this is all we're going to do for this tutorial. Um, again, you know, there's a lot of things here that don't really look quite right yet. We don't have light really. There's not any shadows. Um, but in terms of just the actual coloring and texture, this is what we're going to do here. Now, what you also need to know about Maya is, you know, we have all of these external files that are connected to our shader and then applied to the geometry. If you were to take this image or this, this project folder and move it to another computer or something like that, a lot of times that file path will break. And so like for instance, if you just take this project and post it to Google Classroom um, and then I download it and open it up, probably what's going to happen is that I'll lose connection with all of your textures and everything will show up white and I won't be able to grade to see that you've actually done the texturing. So we have to do one more thing um, just so you can turn this in and make sure that I can see your texturing. And what you're going to do is just do a little test render and save an image. And that's what you're actually going to post to Google Classroom. So I'm going to come up here to this little clapper that well, doesn't have anything in it. And I'm going to do a little test render. Make sure that you have it set to my software right here. If you have it set to Arnold, probably nothing will show up. You're going to have some default lighting that looks kind of weird. And you can also see that I think I might be having a floating table. You can go back and fix that if you like, that's fine. Um, so you, your shadows aren't really right and the lighting isn't super believable, but you can start to see you know, some reflections and some specular things like that happening. Um, and maybe not, maybe you can't see any of that stuff. Maybe it's just flat color everywhere. That's fine for this. Um, 
But what you can do at this point then is come up to File, Save Image, and then you would put this in your Images folder. Hopefully it'll just go right in there, Basic Texting Tutorials Images. And then Texturing Tutorial. Or you know what? You can even just call it Table Tutorial. I'll know what that means. Um, just call it Table Tutorial. Make sure to change this file type because this alias PIX, I can't read that with anything. Um, so change that to like a PNG or a JPEG or a TIFF or a Targa. PNGs are really good though. Um, so save that and then you will go in and I'll show you where it is in your images folder. There's that image that I just saved. So that's my test rendered basic texturing tutorial. So this is the image that you're going to turn in to Google Classroom to show me that you finished this tutorial. Um, and then in the next tutorial, we'll get to, to do a little bit more complicated work with the, the UV editor. So thanks very much.